Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to Silver City Planning and Zoning for Tuesday, July 7th, 2015. If everyone would please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you. And could we have a roll call? Commissioner Clements? Here. Commissioner Stephen? Here. Commissioner Larish? Here. Commissioner Seibel? Commissioner Seated Top? Here. Okay. I think first thing I'll do is say uh, we have a new commissioner, and I'd like to welcome, uh, and again, I'm, my pronunciation, uh, Nisha Larish. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Tonight, the uh, first thing is the approval of the agenda. Has everyone had a chance to look it over? Um, I do know that we already um, made note we need to have um, Janie Katz, the name, and I think in the other paperwork too, it's EY. So if we could get those uh, corrected on all the paperwork. Yes, we call it Janie on the slide show, so we'll uh, make that correction on the minutes. Okay, thank you. Any one note, anything else that needs to be adjusted? No. Okay. All right. Uh, I will accept a motion to approve. I move to approve the agenda. And do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's for tonight's agenda. We also have two sets of minutes. Um, first, the regular meeting from June 2nd. As everyone had a chance to look over those minutes and see if there were any corrections, any concerns about those minutes. They look fine. Okay. Anyone want to move to approve or do you need a minute? Do you want to approve them separately, each one of them? Yes. Yeah. Then I move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting on June 2nd, 2015. Okay. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So approved. And then the other one was our special meeting, which was... June 16th. And has everyone had a chance to look over these minutes? I'll make a move to accept the minutes uh, from the special meeting of Tuesday, June 16th. Okay. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. All right. Okay. And we have no old business, so this evening we have a public hearing. It's public hearing CU15-04, conditional use permit for a property addressed as 305 South Texas Street, Silver City, New Mexico, to be used for an organic candy factory. Manufacturing and production uses require a conditional use permit in the commercial historic downtown district. The applicant is the property owner, Janie Katz, Deborah St. Clair is the owner of the candy company, St. Clair's Organics. Um, when we have a conditional use permit, unless there is an appeal, we are the final say here at Planning and Zoning. And let me just real quickly go over how it works for anyone who might be new to the process. We start with having uh, the town give a presentation. Um, after that, we will have the applicant come forward and give their presentation at which point anyone who wants to speak in favor will be able to speak and then anyone who wants to speak opposed can. We may have questions for people who do speak so if they would please stay till the end of the hearing that would be good. Um, and then after that we will close the, the hearing portion and then the commission will have discussion on it. But first anyone who does want to speak you need to swear in. Swearing in doesn't mean you have to speak, but if you think you might want to speak, uh, if you would come forward to be sworn in. <laughs> All right, and a further oath will the field repeat after me. I state your name. I, Jamie Katz. 
Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that the testimony I am about to give will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. On penalty of perjury. On penalty of perjury. Thank you. Okay, and before we have the presentation, have any of the commissioners had any ex parte conversations? No. No. Okay, I will just state for the record, um, I am friends with Janie Katz, and I ran into her a few weeks ago, and she mentioned she'd be here, but she didn't talk about what it was. I had no idea, so we didn't actually have an ex parte conversation. So uh, if everybody else is good, then we'll go ahead and have our presentation. Uh, this is conditional use 15-04305 South Texas Street. It's also known as the warehouse. The owner and applicant is Janie Katz, and the person who will be operating the business is Deborah St. Clair. She currently operates this business in Colorado, and she'll be giving you uh, the information about what she does to manufacture the candy. According to the use table in the land use and zoning code, industrial uses, manufacturing and production, indoor and outdoor operations with or without outdoor storage is a conditional use in the commercial historic downtown district. She's interested in moving her organic candy company to Silver City. This conditional use is the first step. It's another process where she will be getting her business registration from the town after this. Uh, without the conditional use, there's no uh, point in her moving any further. So this is her first step in moving her business to Silver City. She um, has chosen a location which has been previously used for light manufacturing and artwork production by the owner, Janie Katz, and we also need to correct her name spelling on this. So um, it's a new use. Although it has been used for something in the same category, in time the use changes, a conditional use permit is triggered. This, let me turn off the light so you can see it a little better. Uh, this is the uh, Texas Street side of the building. It's a, quite a large building and has frontage on Texas and San Vicente Street. This is a directly across the street to the west. These are uh, some residences on the same street. They were all uh, mailed the notification and I received no comment from them. I did receive comment from a couple of people through the um, applicant and they were all positive. This is a view north on Texas Street. You'll uh, see the residences uh, along the opposite side of the street. This is the north side of the building facing San Vicente Street. And you'll see across the street there's an engine shop and a motor, uh, the motorcycle dealership that had a conditional use permit previously is right around here. So that's directly north of the subject property. The Planning and Zoning Commission in approving a conditional use permit shall make the following findings and may attach to the permit such reasonable requirements in addition to those specified in the land use code to ensure that the development in its proposed location, one, will not injure the public health or safety, two, will not injure the value of adjoining or nearby properties, three, will be in harmony with the area in which it's located, Four, will be in conformity with the town's comprehensive plan or other plans officially adopted by the town. The Community Development Department staff recommends approval of this request as it meets all four of the required findings. Uh, it's in really all of the neighbors. We've had two uh, neighbors that provided feedback one is here in the audience that are in favor of it. And I think because this building has been used somewhat similarly in the past, none of the neighbors were opposed. We haven't had anybody uh, speak in opposition. And uh, it also fits with that south area of Bullard. There is a little more light manufacturing in that area. And uh, we're pretty excited that a new business would come to town and want to utilize that area of town. So I'll leave the slides on the findings. And then if, if you don't have any questions for me, um, 
both Janie Katz and uh, Deborah St. Clair are here today also. Okay, does anyone have any, does anyone have any questions on the presentation? Not for staff. Not for staff, okay. Okay, and Ms. St. Clair, if you want to go ahead and give your presentation, please. Because I can't access my pictures. Oh, so you okay. think that it's being it's this worth speaking to the mic? Oh, yes. Because and if you introduce yourself, and the reason is we're actually on TV, got it, and got that, it. that way they can hear. Okay, my name is Deborah St. Clair, and I'm the owner of St. Clair's Organics, and I'm delighted to meet you all. This is the first time I've met most of your faces, and the um, the situation that that we have is that we're in Boulder, Colorado. We're in a factory location that has 5,500 square feet, and what we do is a, a we're, we're a candy company I have samples for everyone and we make a dry powdered candy compression product it's not we don't use water we don't accept to clean um, we do adhere with all of the organic and kosher and non-gmo and um, vegan standards it's it's a very clean candy company it's certified organic and our certifi our certification our, our organic certification is actually tougher to meet than and any public health certification we've had to have. We do follow GMP, good manufacturing practices. Um, we're almost qualified for ISO 2001, I think it is. And so it's, it's what we do is we will bring in organic molasses granules. It's dried molasses is the base of our candy. And we mix it with pure essential oils and herbal extracts, and we make probably 89 products right now, including all the products we have on Amazon, because we have 16 base products. And I did bring literature. If I could present that to you, can I give that to you now? Sure. Okay. beginning to talk about our process. So we bring the molasses granules, we mix it in a huge big blender, and then we put it through a tableting machine and make little tablets out of it. One thing you could do is open one of those packages and just look at what the tablets look like. They're just It's basically a breath mint company, but we also make a line of products for children, which is the organic equivalent of sweet tarts, but all with molasses granules, so as a sweetener. And so we package it in this packaging, and then we pack it in master cases, and it's sold through the major natural products distributors all over the country. Also, we're in like seven countries that we export internationally to. That kind of brings me to a question. A couple of questions. One of them you already answered. There won't be any direct sales or any uh, storefront at no, no, the storefront. warehouse building. Mm -hmm. So it's all a delivered or distributed product. Correct. What about traffic in that area? How do you use just regular vans? Do you get big trucks in? 
We do bring big trucks in, um, but but like the, not the huge ones. We might get a huge one when we get our tin shipment. You see that they're in these collectible tins. Mm -hmm. So about three times a year, we'll have a semi come in and deliver our tins. Um, our molasses granules are purchased one time per year, so that's not going to be an, a big impact. We do have trucking companies come in and pick up our pallets of finished goods to take to the distributors, and they're usually smaller trucks. Not huge long semis. And, and Ms. Katz, you have a, a place for the trucks to back up to, I assume. There's a, we already have a spot pre designated for that. Uh, we have several loading docks, okay. but we also, um, I've also talked with Stuart, um, who's right across the street at Custom Steelworks doing his own manufacturing. Right. And um, he has uh, forklifts. Oh. You know, and he also operates a wood shop in the downstairs of the uh, the basement of the warehouse. And so, um, as a condition of his rent, when he renews, it'll be that he'll unload this stuff whenever it comes. Home. He just doesn't know. Yet. He does now. He does now. <laughs> And how many employees do we have? Well, I think that when we come down here, we will bring our lead factory manager. And I've already um, started forming a relationship with a new bookkeeper. And we've met with um, one of the marketing direct, or not directors, but one of the marketing professors who's directing a, a marketing program at the university. So we will be looking for maybe four more people. So... And let's and then there's myself, but I don't usually count myself. I try to stay behind the scenes as much as possible, even though I'm there. I formulate the products, I design all the products. I'm a graphic designer, and I've created about 300 products for the natural foods industry. And the reason we're coming down here is because my husband is a professor of astronomy at, at Colorado, at the University of Colorado, and so he's going to retire, and I'm not ready to retire yet, and so I'm trying to keep the business close to me instead of having to shunt myself up into Colorado several times a month. So this, you're closing that location. I this would. This will be your own location. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is there parking for employees? Is there off-street parking? Or will they be parking on Oh, this street? will be so, oh, it, there's, there's a little area so that's totally area. easy for parking, yes. It, it does not have to be on the street. Okay. And then uh, did someone from the town discuss with you the the four findings that they have, still have up there? Thank you. <laughs> you, uh, you do need to address each of those because we do have to, for a conditional use, it has to meet all four of those. So if you would address those, that would be great. Sure. I can't really see. Can I step out? Oh, yeah. Um, it won't be to the public health facility that I can see. It's just um, I can't see how it could be in the public health. Um, actually, just the ingredients themselves are so wholesome that it's got to be quite sugar candy in the marketplace. So, will not injure the value of joining the nearby properties? Um, I, I, no, there's nothing that I can think of that could do that at all. Will it be in harmony with the area in which it is located? We don't plan to change the outside of the building at all. But we do plan to change the inside of the building because we've already met with an environmental inspector and health department here, and we do know that we have to do things to make it pass not only the environment standards here, but also our organic certification. So we will be doing things to the inside of the building. We won't see that on the outside. Um, we'll be in conformity with the town's comprehensive plan. I have no clue that Jamie says we are, so I'm going to rest on that. <laughs> Okay. You move over that too. Then. Okay. Just since you were not at the mic to to say that you stated that it would meet number one and two, and number three, you mentioned that you will not be changing the exterior of the building from what it is already. You'll be doing work on the inside, but it will be environmentally sound. Right. You have to insulate the roof. So there will be an insulation of the roof, but then that same roof will be put back on. Okay. 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 And. Did anyone have any questions, other questions? How many square feet is the space? 75. Oh, so it would be bigger than your current one, so we have room to grow. Okay. And I just want to recap, the, the large trucks are maybe three or four times a year, depending upon whether or not you're getting your molasses. Of course, you'll have larger trucks come in to do your delivery, but after that, 
Stuart and his forklift will uh, help shuttle maybe. <laughs> um, I, I hope that Stuart's forklift will help all the time. I'm not sure until we actually get the docks retrofitted. Um, we, I, I think the only way that we can do it at this point is with Stuart's help. But I, I hate to ask people to do things, even though Janie has a way with people. I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. But the the big trucks will be not very frequent. Right. Um, we we say that if we're shipping less than six master cases, then we always go by FedEx. And so we'll be taking some of those to FedEx. But most of them will go on pallets. And so trucks will come in. And I would say right now we're getting maybe 10 pickups a month by trucks that are taking the pallets away to the distributors. So although there will be some traffic, it will be minimal impact. Minimal, it be quick regular, and over. Regular daily impact or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's also no um, saying you have to retrofit some things to the inside of the building. I assume some of that has to do with emissions and there's no issue with this molasses-based product and any kind of... No, what, what the department, the environmental departments looked up at the wood ceiling and said, I want every stitch of that wood covered with something so that no dust can fall in your candy. Okay. That's the kind of thing that we'll be doing. Okay. And there will not be a noticeable odor by neighbors when you're manufacturing? Yes, no. Anything out of our factory. It's all happening on the inside. And then it gets packaged so quickly that, no. Okay. Yeah. So sound isn't an issue either. Yeah. No, I don't think, you know, we're going to be insulating the sides of the walls mm -hmm. and the ceiling. I don't think you'll hear anything from the outside. And our equipment's pretty quiet. Okay. Yeah. We hear it if we're standing next to it, of course. But I don't think it's going to have any effect for outside. Yeah. Those were all the questions that I had. Okay. Did anyone else want to speak at all? Anyone have anything they want to add? Yes, Ms. Katz, if you'll come up to the podium. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, when we first purchased the warehouse, there was a, um, a guy that lived across the street, which the house across the street is now vacant and has been for about two and a half to three years. Um, but there was a guy that lived there that drove semis for a living and I have no idea how he got it on that street but he did and parked it there and it sat there all the time and when we bought it we finally told him uh, you know it's got to sit somewhere else um, you know I was talking to uh, Miss Gruber and she said that they have semis that come every week and pick up from Syzygy so you know um, Stewart also has huge trucks that come in this is not a uh, you know the, the warehouse already, when we bought it, was manufacturing, uh, when Jack Brennan um, owned it, was manufacturing uh, cabinets and stuff like that. And that's already being done everywhere. So I don't think this is too big of a stretch. Um, you know, we were already sort of grandfathered in from all the quote unquote light manufacturing that's been going on there long before I ever bought it. Kevin Humble. Um, owned the building at one time and his whole um, you know wood floor business was down in the basement and so I don't think that the impact is going to be that great on the neighbors and they are really really nice we have you know included them when virus theater was there we included them and they have always given the neighbors free tickets to anything that goes on at the warehouse and they've been you know very supportive frankly it's it's exciting for them, you know, their kids grew up sitting on the uh, loading docks and watching us rehearse for virus theater. So, um, I think they'll, if there's any smell at all, which she says there isn't, I would hope there would be because who doesn't want to smell, you know, burning molasses? Sounds good to me, but they're not burning it; they're just tabulating it. So, um, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Any other questions? Question: um, The warehouse is for sale. Yes. And will this convey with the sale? I mean, this business. Yes. It's not like the person that's buying it can kick Miss St. Clair out. No. 
Oh, the building? Right. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. But first of all, before I can do anything else, I need to have the approval that I can do the business in it. So you guys are the first gate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good question. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll close the hearing part of, of that, and then we'll... Uh, have a discussion. I kind of like to, we tend to go over the findings randomly. I think it'd be kind of nice to do them in order. <laughs> uh, so, first, does anybody have any commentary or concerns or anything with the number one will not endanger the public health or safety? I have no concerns. Okay. Uh, any commentary on number two will not enter the value of adjoining or nearby properties. Same here. Sounds like it will enhance it. It could. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Somebody said it. <laughs> uh, number three will be in harmony with the area in which it is located. Yes. I think that's a given. And I'll, I'll just state that, uh, as Ms. Katz said, over the years, there have been a variety of things, different types of manufacturing, all kinds of things along those lines. Some of them probably more invasive than, than this sounds like it won't be at all. So, And then number four will be in conformity with the town's comprehensive plan or other plans officially adopted by the town. Yes. Yes. And one of the things that is part of our, our comprehensive plan is infill and using spaces and for me it's always nice to, and we've seen this similar case the last several months we've had kind of similar uh, applicants and it's nice to see people using pre-existing structures instead of starting new ones up somewhere and leaving something empty so I think actually it does a, a little favor in the conformity with the town plan um, any other discussion anybody wants I'll entertain a motion. I move that we accept uh, CU 1504 conditional use permit for property addressed as 305 South Texas Street, Silver City, New Mexico, to be used for an organic candy factory, and that the uses uh, are in line with items one through four in the necessary findings. I second. Okay, could we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Clinton? I'm in favor, yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Larish? Yes. And Commissioner Stevens? Approved. Okay, thank you. First of all, I want to thank you um, both Ms. St. Clair and Ms. Katz for coming forward, going through the process. Um, as I said at the beginning, with a conditional use, unless there's an appeal, this is the final say. You don't have to go through city council after this for this particular type of, of request. And thank you very much, and we wish you the best of luck. And thank you for bringing another business to town. That's exciting. You're very welcome. Okay. Uh, we do not have any new business. Um, community forum, I'll just stop and, and talk about that for a minute. We've kind of stopped doing that, um, and we do have a few new uh, commissioners, so I'll just kind of go over that a little bit again. We're able to um, not just see requests, uh, we're also able to do studies or put through recommendations. So if there's ever anything that you want to have brought forward as a forum, and then maybe we could even put a recommendation through the city council on that, we can we can do that. Uh, an example in the past was the neighborhood that's off of Cottage Stand, Alabama. They came forward and they had a lot of discussion about traffic issues in their neighborhood, which has been a concern for a long time. So that was one of the things along this line. So if you all ever have a forum idea that you would like, we we can we can put that on an agenda and we can ask anybody who's in that area to come in and speak um, to us. So just to let you know that that's available. Um, and if anybody has anything, just you know, bring that up and we'll get around the agenda. Um, are there any uh, reports from staff? Yes, 
uh, welcome to our new commissioner. And uh, at our next meeting, which could possibly be September, we'll need to hold elections. Uh, so you can be thinking of who you'd like to nominate for uh, chair and vice chair. And uh, we haven't had any applications for the August meeting, so uh, we will cancel that one. So September would be our next meeting. Anything else? I believe that's it. Thank you for oh, and I, No, it's not it. <laughs> I would like to introduce our new staff member, Erin Johnson. She's our uh, new secretary for our department, uh, the fire department, and the Southwest Council of Governments. Is Erin A E R I N? E R I N. E R I N Johnson. Yes. Welcome. So uh, she'll be taking our minutes and she'll be at the meetings with me now. Okay. I'm glad you asked me. Two new people. And thank you again for your presentation. As always, you're very thorough. Uh, do we have any community input in general? Okay. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>